Today, we're talking about the gear we used on our latest short film. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And with every short that I do, I'm usually using something different gear wise, but there's also a ton of tried and true pieces of gear that go with me on every project or that I rent for each project. So, with that, let's dive into the main pieces of gear that we used on our latest Ghost House. First, let's start with the most obvious, the camera. For this one, I went with the Alexa Mini, which I had on loan thanks to my friends at Contrast Films. I went with the Alexa because of the overall look that you get and because I wanted to shoot anamorphic, which meant I needed a camera that would handle that correctly. So with the Alexa, I was able to shoot 4.3, then throw on the Kawa anamorphic lenses, which we got from 444 camera in Dallas, and then I could de-squeeze that later in post for our final look. If you want more with the Alexa Mini, check out our review episode right here. We also had an easy rig on hand for handheld and gimbal work which is this contraption. You throw it on like a weird life vest, then pull this cable down attached to your camera, and it distributes the weight of the rig that you're having to hold. The tension of the cable can be adjusted in the back to match the weight of your rig as well. It's incredibly helpful when shooting for a long period of time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> For the gimbal, we used the Movi on this one, again thanks to our friends at Contrast Films, which we used for the opening one -er in Ghost House. Then for monitors, I used all small HD, again, they're personal favorites. I've rented them for pretty much every project I've done for the last few years, and on this one, we had the 702 monitors for my director's monitor and our on-cam monitor, and the 3203, which is small HD's 32-inch monitor. This one was mostly used for our first AC, Chase Smith, to pull focus from. It's a bit overkill, but he wasn't complaining. And he was pulling focus using Cinegear's Follow Focus kit that we got from B&H Photo. More recently, I got ICANN's PD Movie kit, so I'll be taking a look at that on the show soon. For lights, we had a large assortment of things, but some of my favorites were the Westcott lights, which are the flex lights, the super thin and posable LED sheets. The great thing about them is they have solid output and can be put almost anywhere. You can flex them around an object, mount it up high like on a fan or ceiling tile. Since they're so light, they have a ton of possible mounting positions. Then also from Westcott, I have my ice light. I've been using this nonstop since I got it. I just paired it with an A7S on a project to get some shots in a pitch black forest at night. It's crazy portable and completely awesome. Then I have my aperture lights like my panels and my 120T. I've talked about these in other episodes and did a review on the panels right here, so go check that out. For more LED panels, I have my ICANN Raiden lights. These guys are by color, so I can click this button back here and I can change the color temp of the light. Click it again and I'm dimming. And like my others, it can be battery powered, so that is a massive plus. Then of course I always have some clamp lights on hand and some dimmers. My gaffer had his own dimmers on this one, but I own some basic impact dimmers. They're cheap and get the job done. You can also build your own dimmer if you'd like. Then we have our camera support with my Benro BV10 tripod and Benro hi-hat. I won't go into a ton of detail on this since we're doing an episode on them soon, but like I said before, the hi-hat was an absolute must for getting the house fire shot that I wanted. I needed to have an extremely low angle that would be rock solid and not adjust in between changing lights around. And then I have my Kessler shuttle dolly, which is basically what you get when you give a slider all kinds of steroids. You throw this guy up on some speed rails and away you go. I think I mentioned it before, but we use this for about 80% of Ghost House. We were able to get Fisher dolly type shots without having to break the bank with that kind of rental. And I'm also planning a more in-depth episode on this guy. So now, sponsor. Why do you look like you did something wrong? It just feel, it felt like a really bad segue. Well, it was. <laughs> All right, bye. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator, Domain.com is the place to go when the next idea hits you. I know you've probably heard me say that the list of available domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to name your site and build your brands in ways that was never before possible. You can choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. And they give you some love and they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIOT when you check out at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. 
Logo. Next up is my audio gear. For this film, I hired someone to handle production audio for me, but when I'm doing it myself, my go-to mic is the Rode NTG3. I've been using it for years and trust it completely. They've also released new mounts like the PG2R pistol grip, which I use to get location sounds, and they also have the new shotgun mounts and boom poles, all of which look great, and I plan to buy very soon. Then to record these sounds, I've been using my Zoom F8, which I've had for about a year now. It's an eight channel recorder that's under $1,000, but sounds as good as the high-end sound devices. You're definitely missing some features, but none that I use all that often, so this is easily my current favorite recorder and another piece of gear that I need to do a more proper episode on. After that, it's a whole lot of grip gear, like C-stands, which we did a whole episode on right here, combo stands, which are beefier stands for more heavy-duty work, solids, and diffusion, which of course a cheap and effective way to diffuse a larger area is by using a shower curtain. We showed some DIY options for that in this episode right here. And finally, the underappreciated Apple box. It's a wooden box, but it has so many uses on set, like having something for an actor to stand on to raise them up a bit when needed, prop anything up, help balance an uneven piece of gear, or just to have a place to sit. A full kit would have a full half and quarter apple in there, so you have what you need for any application. Then, as a little term tip, you'll say LA, Chicago, or New York to identify the side of the apple box you want set up. So if you want it at its lowest to the ground, you'd say LA, on its side would be Chicago, and at its tallest, you'd call for New York. Of course, we also had a one-ton grip truck at our location that my gaffer Seth Newell brought, which was filled with all sorts of goodies like everything I mentioned before, and then some. You can rent these from any major rental house in your area. Just do some Googling. Logo. But that's it for today. A quick look at some of my go-to gear for a short film. And if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out our latest Black Friday ad to see all the crazy sales we have coming and because it's an animated elf that humps things. So for those two reasons, go here. Also, you can find links to everything we talked about today in the notes below. So check that out. And I'll see you guys next week when it turns out she was a cop the whole time.